Great. Um, hello, welcome uh, to our presentation today, Hitting Pause, Ways to Refresh and Reinforce Accessible and Inclusive Learning. Um, today we're going to be showing you strategies to use in a web broadcast to invigorate your lectures, improve retention, and create an inclusive learning environment. Um, so we're just going to jump in and get started here. Um, we're going to start the presentation today with a Zoom poll um, as a way to assess current knowledge and open the presentation uh, for the activity. If you have any questions, um, do type them in the chat box and Marilyn uh, will be quick to respond to you there. Hopefully we can troubleshoot anything that comes up today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this Zoom poll. And so um, use your mouse to select the, your best answer to the question, what is a pause? Um, options are pauses um, is a new video conferencing platform. Pauses are awkward periods of time during a lecture or pauses inject stimulating experiences um, at critical moments in the learning process. Um, I'm gonna keep the poll open uh, until we get roughly as many responses as participants. Um, and it looks like we have uh, 15 out of 15. Awesome. So I will um, end the polling. And now I'm going to share the results with you all. So that should be popping up on your screen. Okay, so uh, as all of you are correct. Pauses inject stimulating experiences at critical moments in the learning process. Um, that's the uh, definition we're going to today. If anyone knows of any new video conferencing platforms called, called Pauses, do let us know. Um, but it looks like everyone uh, is up to speed here. So I'm gonna stop sharing my results. Close out of this. Um, and just say welcome, welcome to our presentation. My name is Anastasia Thayer. I'm an assistant professor in the Applied Economics Department, and I am joined today uh, by Marilyn. Hi, I'm Marilyn Kutch. I'm a lecturer in secondary education, and I'm presenting from Roosevelt. Before we move on, we would like to acknowledge that we are guests on the ancestral lands of the Diné. Goshoot, Paiute, Shoshone, and the Ute peoples past, present, and honor the land and the peoples who have stewarded it throughout the generations. Aho. How many times have we planned for our students to take a moment, maybe talk about our subject matter after lecturing on an amazing subject or topic? Or when was the last time we allowed for the students to pause? take a moment, just truly think about what they're learning, or do we just move on to keep the schedule moving? Because we know they, they, they've got it, they've got it. Well, if we think about our course design and lectures, most of our courses consist of us doing the learning by spending most of our time lecturing. We miss out on pivotal pieces of good teaching, and that is by pausing and letting our students start the doing. In our presentation today, we want for you to outline the benefits of intentional pauses for students in a web broadcasting format, experience how the three types of pauses are beneficial in student learning, and plan for intentional and inclusive pauses in teaching. This spring, Anna and I were part of an ETE learning circle where the book Hitting Pause by Gail Taylor Rice was our focus. We really encourage you to read the ebook available at USU Libraries if you want more information on integrating pur purposeful pauses in your teaching and web broadcasting classes. And don't forget in your ETE uh, description where you came and you hit the link for this, we have that resource available. Anna? Great. So we're going to jump right in here. Um, what is a pause? Pauses are ways to inject stimulating experiences at critical moments in the learning process. They can take many forms and be used throughout the lecture. Um, a few just general examples um, of pauses are, pauses can allow students to reflect on past learning and describe where they have used the content, content previously. Um, pauses can be used uh, to have students interact with fellow learners to fill gaps in their understanding. And then we can also ask students uh, to describe what they value during the lecture or what actions they plan to take and follow up with. 
Another reason why pauses are important is to build inclusiveness among our students. And if we provide more of those opportunities for students to enter the learning space through positive interactions and safe exchanges of ideas and thoughts, we can then provide a community where inclusiveness grows among and amidst our learners. Additionally, our students will persist in this cohesive learning environment, even if it may require them to persist for longer periods of time when solving problems. There are many benefits to adding pauses uh, to your teaching. As we mentioned, pauses can be used uh, to help students focus and increase retention. Um, but if we're attempting to create this inclusive learning community, pauses can be uh, used to allow all students an opportunity uh, to engage with the material, um, voice their opinion and experience, and really have ownership over the learning process. As an instructor, we also find that pauses provide an opportunity for us to receive feedback um, on our teaching in real time, make adjustments where necessary, and really maximize uh, the time that we have uh, with our students. So, so we're going to maximize our time right now, and we're going to hit our first pause, which is a starting pause, and experience starting pause number 10 from hitting pause. Quiz time start audience response system. So again, we're going to go back to the poll and start a Zoom poll. This quiz is related to the topic on pauses. So please respond to the following questions using the response area found in the Zoom poll. If you have any questions, remember that text chat box is right below you and you can add anything there. Choose which statements explain why pauses are useful. Hey, we've got some going now, Anna. Uh, <laughs> no, the first one, starting pauses help you provide quizzes for your classes. Starting pauses provide time for you to catch your breath when you lecture. Starting pauses help you assess student knowledge of content prior to lecturing or the final one, starting pauses help with midterms. We'll continue to see, get to that 100% voting, good. Good participation today. All right, a couple more. Almost to 100%. Isn't this great? You can see the real time results for our part when you're looking, and then you can decide when you want to close it. All right, 15 of 16 have participated. That sounds pretty good to me. Let's end that poll and let's look at the results. If I could take you all out and, and take, get some, um, some ta taffy, saltwater taffy, I would because you all did great on this. C is correct. Starting pauses help you assess student knowledge of content prior to learning. So let's, let's just say that that's pretty darn good response. So excellent. Starting pauses, they do. They activate prior knowledge or experiences relating to a topic. A starting pause can focus or refocus information from previous teaching cycles or even in your laboratories. They can generate curiosity about the topic you're teaching or going to discuss during your web broadcasting. Or you can use starting pauses to review concepts from previous teaching or discussions. You can also go back. This is the data piece that I love. You can use starting pauses that you did at the beginning and then use it again as a closing pause to see the assessment of your teaching and student learning. We have a question in the chat box, Anna. It says, I hope you will show us how to create these polls in advance. Lisa, thank you for, for asking. Lisa, can you give me a thumbs up or wave your hand? Yeah. Great, good for you. Uh, we're not going to show you how to use a poll, but we do have many resources on how to in the resource section under where you clicked in to get to the link to our presentation. And that's where you can also um, get more information on how to create a poll using Zoom. Good question. I didn't even have to pay her to do that, Anna. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was an easy one. Yeah. Thank goodness. Okay, <laughs> awesome. So I think uh, anything else on starting pauses, Marilyn, or was that we're, good we're for you? Great, that is great. Okay, awesome. Well, then we'll jump right in uh, to a mid pause, and this mid pause is going to be modeled after uh, mid pause number twenty five in the hitting pause book, think pair share, and so what we've done for to 
move this to a web broadcast is we are going to use the breakout rooms in Zoom to provide an opportunity for you all to discuss a prompt and reflect on the presentation uh, to date. And so what I'm going to do is initiate the breakout rooms, randomly assign everyone into uh, four rooms. <clears throat> You'll have five minutes to discuss the prompt. How do you think you'd be able to integrate a starting pause into your class? At the end of five minutes, we'll come back together um, and one person from each group will report back on their discussion um, and hopefully be able to provide the group an idea um, of how you'd integrate a starting pause into your class. Before I you start to, your discussion. I want to interject really quickly. Please do. Also, it's in your chat box too, if you want to be able to take a look at that, because I know sometimes people forget. It's also put your question in your chat box. Mm -hmm. And yep. Shelly, I see your book. You got your book with you. Very good. Yeah, you get some saltwater taffy. Very, very good. Um, so make sure you have a leader um, in your group who can be the timekeeper and then also report back so we're not scrambling at the end there. Um, the prompt, as Marilyn mentioned, will be in the chat box and then it's also going to pop up um, in your breakout session. I'll be coming into each breakout group um, just to make sure there are no questions, uh, see how it's going. Um, you're not going to have to do anything to get into uh, the breakout room, and then we'll all come back uh, into the main session at the end of the five minutes there. So here we go. I'm going to start the breakout rooms for us now. Perfect. So I think we're all back. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Um, thank you all for, for participating. Um, as, as we mentioned, uh, now we're going to go through and kind of debrief this activity. Um, so I was wondering if group one, if Kelsey might be willing to share um, some of the takeaways from, from that breakout group, or if you guys had any specific ways you might be able to introduce starting pauses into your lectures. Absolutely. I shared how you could do a true false quiz at the beginning of the class that would hit on the major topics that you want to address in the lecture that isn't then graded but kind of just sparks curiosity for the topic. Another suggested using a Google Doc um, that could have a, po a question posted like what went well and then what did not work well with the past lecture to kind of get feedback from the students because of how the course kind of progresses and builds on each other. But then another one, uh, another participant suggested like how she does a little assessment three times during the class and um, I kind of considered it a KWL start where she'll ask them like well what are you uh, wanting to learn um, what have you come in with and can share with the class and then what have you actually learned and then um, can use that to make sure she's hitting on the expectations of the students and make any adjustments during the semester on topics that the students are really intrigued about that's that's great. That's awesome. Um, and I think for those of those of us who, or those of you who haven't heard some of these um, ideas before, I think a lot of those were in the or at least some concept was in that uh, hitting pause book, right? Mm -hmm. um, so again, a great resource for folks to look at because those are awesome ideas. Um, Polly from Group Two, would you be willing to share some of the conversation? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, we talked about uh, using a starting pause to, to start class by doing an assessment, um, kind of measuring and showing learning and improvement over time, or creating some sort of a design and critiquing it to kind of warm up your brain, depending on what the topic was, um, or even taking, you know, 10 minute period to just start drawing. This was from Amanda who teaches an art class. And I was thinking I should find a way to incorporate that into my, uh, analytics class, <laughs> you know, just to kind of have some diversity there. So I really like that. And then um, also if maybe they had a reading assignment that was due before class, having, taking, you know, some time for them to reflect on that and center themselves again, kind of warming up their brains. And we also discussed for some students who maybe come to class with a little bit of anxiety for, you know, a variety of reasons <laughs> now that we're in a pandemic, but um, this could kind of help those who have anxiety kind of just calm down and center themselves. And, and you could even as an instructor use that time to, to tie today's material back to the previous class material. So you're kind of connecting everything and keeping the big picture in mind. Definitely, yeah, finding ways to 
you know, give students some confidence before you launch into new material, right? All, all good ideas. Um, Wendy from group three. We talked about a lot of the things other people talked about, for sure. Um, reflecting on past learning, I like that idea of how did the past lecture go well, but we could also do it very content oriented, even outside of the reading is what's come clear to you since, or how have you checked in on your personal projects um, to, to gather folks. We also, I really liked the idea that our um, moderator suggested of kind of a come into my class, an opportunity to center, and she reminded us that there might be cleaning requirements for some classrooms. And Marilyn, I thought maybe even that's a way to, maybe there's a way to make that purposeful, like a, take this opportunity to kind of leave your world outside and come into the class and, and, and join us. Um, and yeah, great ideas all around, but most of them have already been mentioned. Awesome. Yeah, I really like the using the cleaning a little more than just a metaphor, right? Yeah, that, that's that's great. Um, and then our last group, Shelly from group four. Would you like to share? So as, as Wendy said, most of our ideas have been discussed about having a, a, a quiz or an assessment um, at the beginning of the class to see, you know, where they are, where they stand. And um, we, we talked about connecting the importance of being able to connect labs to the class that they're associated with and how, you know, making sure that, th that those ideas may, might be running parallel to each other. Um, we talked about, again, uh, bridging from, from Tuesday's lecture to Thursday's lecture, or especially from Thursday's lecture to Tuesday's lecture, maybe with some calendaring items and to, uh, to take a little pull of the class. Are, you, are we all on the same page? Does everybody understand what happened last time there. You kind of remember a little bit about what happened last time. So using it as a transition from one lecture day to the to the next lecture day. Um, and then the idea that what happens, we can use that the, uh, the opening pause and then it comes full circle and then kind of can become part of the closing pause as, as to make the, the lecture full circle as a part of the day. Yeah, we really like that feature for, for the opening, um, the starting pauses. Um, one, one thing that I will also mention, you know, the fact that we're going through the, you know, everyone seems to be talking about similar, similar ideas, similar options. Um, I think that's great, right? So as an instructor, Marilyn and I are saying, okay, that, that's great. It sounds like we, we did a good job uh, with that first pause. Um, so, Again, the mid-pause is a way to focus and refocus your class. It's a way to create community through rights in these smaller groups. Um, and it's recommended for a variety um, of settings, including web broadcast, um, but you could also use it during face-to-face uh, -face classroom lectures um, or more traditional settings. So thanks so much for participating. Shelly, I need to throw you another piece of taffy because you set up my closing pause section. <laughs> so excellent work on that. Yeah. Uh, the third and final pause we're going to experience is a closing pause. A closing pause is very useful to affirm concepts taught in our web broadcasting or even to review those concepts again. You can use a closing pause for celebrations of what you've learned from student clinicals or laboratory presentations. Closing pauses are helpful to allow for our students to share their commitment to an action or even practicing the concepts that you've taught. So today we're going to do something called a one word at the door. You've done this before. It's where you give your students an index card or they can tear off the bottom of a piece of paper and then you ask them for one word comment on that card or piece of paper and then leave it with you at the end of the class. We're going to be doing this using a Google Doc and this means that sometimes you just don't have enough time if you use one word at the door, you can get formative feedback on your teaching. You can also uh, find out what stood out most in the learning of cycle for that day. And then also if you want to build on personal relationships through even more engagement as they're leaving. Uh, in the chat box, you're going to see a link to the Google Doc. If you could click on that, please give me a thumbs up or if you have your GIF on, it's okay. I want to make sure that everybody has a copy because this is an a participation with everybody. Those of you that have the book, uh, one word at the door is number 49.
it's a closing pause. So our prompt is going to be uh, using the options of stop, go, and caution. You're going to indicate your confidence in using the techniques in today's presentation. So you're going to choose one of the options, stop, which means I'm totally confused. So in the parentheses, you'll put what concept you're totally confused about. Go means I'm ready to go, can do this, no, don't need any help, ready to implement it. Caution in the parentheses, put something you need clarification on. And if you could type your responses at the bottom in the Google Doc, we can see some of you are already starting. You're on top of each other. This is good participation. I'll wait for you to go ahead and fill in those areas. There's probably other ways to also use the Google Doc. We were thinking maybe a Google um, table where the students can put go and then they list all of the goes and then each of their cells are different because it looks like you're kind of typing on top of each other. Uh, but this is one way where you can see in real time what they know and what they're wanting to do. Uh, remember, put in your parentheses what you're ready to do for go, stop, you need more clarification on. It could be even using web um, breakout rooms with Zoom. <laughs> Anastasia's, she, she, she's got this down. Notice we've done four different things using, using it, um, using web broadcasting interactions within 30 minutes. I would say Marilyn and I practiced uh, quite a few times to get all this technology <laughs> going. And I think if I was filling out this, uh, Google Doc, I'd still, you know, have caution, all of this technology. Caution, um, caution. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right. Well, we have to be mindful of our time. So if you're still writing in that document, that's wonderful. Uh, but we want to be able to show you that you can see real-time feedback from students. And it's helpful for you. Stop, Zoom. That's, that's me. I still need more work with Zoom. <laughs> So whoever's writing that, I see some uh, stop Google document organization. Yes. And if you're wanting to know how do I do this, we've included it in the list of resources in the uh, eLearn X resource for our session. So again, a closing document, uh, closing pauses allow for you to be able to get information from your students. Word, one word at the door was one we cho chose because it was a lot um, easier to get some real-time responses. Now, Anna, I'm going to, I think we're looking at time, so I'll turn this over to you for the next one. So thank you for participating. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so we hope that the presentation today, uh, you've learned and experienced three examples of ways um, to create a more engaging and inclusive space for students, particularly in a web broadcast format. Um, as we mentioned today, we only experienced three of the many pauses introduced in the Hitting Pause book. Um, so we encourage you to take a look uh, at the book, uh, do some more reading, and find ways to tailor the pauses to your particular class and situation. Um, and finally, pauses, we just want to reiterate, pauses are a great way uh, to create a positive, inclusive uh, web broadcasting environment. And the technological tools um, available and previewed today can be helpful to create this environment. And there really are, um, we encourage you to take advantage of the resources both on campus and on the web um, to help learn how to use uh, these great tools in, in your teaching. So with that, uh, we'd like to say uh, thank you for attending our presentation. Do let us know if you have any questions or would like to continue the conversation further. Yeah, great. And putting in a plug again for our wonderful ETE, uh, we want to say join a learning circle this year. Uh, we have wonderful resources. You'll get a book, or if there's something that you're working with, you'll get that free from ETE. And the slide carnival was so super easy to use uh, during this presentation. So at this time, we're we'll open it up for any questions that you might have. If you have, don't wanna say it out loud, you're welcome to put it in the chat box. Any comments also, any additional comments? I have a question. Are we supposed to go back to the session board and write something about attending a session? Or? 
Uh, who may I ask who that was? The sunshine. Oh, hi, sunshine. Oh, you're you're down with the at arches right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that background. Uh, I think they want you to continue the discussion and give feedback in there. And that's also a wonderful pause. That would be a closing pause too, uh, that you could continue to use. So good questions. The ebook is available on that link too, where the discussion that Sunshine was bringing up for our session. Definitely read that if you're looking for ways. They also outline not just face-to-face, -face, but they have online examples of the starting, mid, and the closing pauses. Okay, Rachel asked, uh, do we just go to the next session? You certainly do. That's right. You can yeah. go to the next one. Yeah. Uh, Sunshine, if you want that, or anyone wants the native land acknowledgement, I wrote that and I can give you the HTML code to put it in your Canvas class if you'd like. Just email me. Um, another uh, resource down at the bottom too is your reactions. And I didn't uh, outline that because I thought that that was also something that many people, if you play around with your Zoom, you'll get used to that. I really like the reactions for a quick, um, even if people aren't on, maybe they had to had because maybe they're eating something or they're turned on their, their emoji. That response gives you something quickly um, that you can check for understanding in your classes. And I just love that you can tailor the color of your skin also. That's another piece that is, is different than other um, interactive broadcasting features. So great. Really, Marilyn, that's, All right. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see mine is brown. I'm not yellow like normally. So, so. and that tells me we're supposed to end. All right, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the rest. See you. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.